Hey, what's good y'all, it's John Manalo. I got a pair of Air Maxes that I'm gonna be restoring. These shoes weren't that bad to begin with, but I just thought that they need to have a little bit of TLC. I haven't swapped a pair of Air Maxes in a while, so I did run into some issues. Halfway through, I'm like, how am I gonna do this? But yeah, if you guys enjoyed the video, and if you guys could do me a favor and like this video, I would appreciate it. Hi right, y'all. Yo, so I got these Atmos Safari Air Maxes from O2 and they need to be brought back from the dead. I've always liked this shoe for the forest green swoosh that it has on the side and on the heel. And the mini swoosh around the toe looks hella fire with the safari print. I'm just waiting for Nike to bring back that big ass air bubble on the Air Maxes. I swear every shoe that I've been working on now costs more than I remember. Last time I checked how much these cost, I don't know, it was like a few years ago. It was like going for 600, 800 max for a dead stock pair. Now it's almost three times that price. Yo, so the soles on these are like dried up cookie dough. I don't, I don't know how to explain it. It's like not even soft, but it crumbles so easily. The soles are just dried up. I'm gonna take off as much as I can off of the rubber sole so I don't gotta deal with that later. So check this out. This is how you can tell when the shoes were produced. The first two numbers above the size is the year. So you got 2002, November 1st. I'm gonna be using these as my replacement soles because I'm trying to preserve that air bubble color on the Safari Atmos. It's not exact, but it's pretty close. I was trying to take everything out of the shoes then I saw this guy put two insoles. My man's trying to reach that height requirement at Disneyland. You know what? I think I'm gonna reuse these insoles and just slap a Nike Air logo on them. Yeah, I'm definitely not gonna reuse the original insoles. This guy was tiptoeing in his Air Maxes because you can still see the heel logo. So what's gonna help me remove the uppers on the donors is using heat along with acetone. And I'm gonna be using a blow dryer to puff up as much hot air inside of these shoes. I'm not gonna use a heat gun because it's gonna be too hot and it might pop the air bubble. I'm gonna pour in a little bit of that acetone and wait for it to like do its magic. It's important to swirl it around downtown and double take three times just to make sure you get acetone all over the shoe. And if you need to add a little bit more, just not too much. And for the stubborn areas, I have the syringe filled with acetone to help me like pour in acetone where it's not reaching. Can someone in the comments let me know how many times I say acetone in this video? Jesus. So the best way to clean shoes that have dirt on them is to use a dry brush first. You want to brush off as much of the excess off of the shoe. Using my favorite Billy Mays product, OxyClean, I'm going to use this amazing white powder to sanitize and clean these nasty insoles. I would buy new insoles, but most of them look like this. If I can find a blank one, that's even better. Then I can put the Nike logo on them. It's just hard to find the color that I actually want. All right, I'm gonna use this, I think it's called upholstery vacuum to extract all of that water inside of the insoles. A big shout out to Costco for having these microfiber towels. You can get 50 of them for like $2.99. Alright, I'm using a soft bristle brush to clean the uppers on these shoes. Because of how beat they are, some of the stains on the safari print just won't come off. It's cool, just let people know you be wearing your shoes, you know what I mean? I don't judge me, I'm using the only last I have to like reshape the shoes, even though they're not an Air Jordan, it still fits. Uh, and it works so and this also helps decrease the toe box I want to make sure nothing goes in your eyes So I'm gonna put on these safety glasses for you because we're gonna use a Dremel tool to remove all of that XS midsole from the uppers Yeah 
So we got majority of the factory glue in midsole off. I'm gonna take care of the rest with acetone and cotton balls. So the one thing about sole swapping is you're gonna need to adjust the midsole every time. By that, I mean you're gonna need to shave down the foam. All of the donors that I've used before, you're gonna need to adjust them to fit the shoe that you're working on. They're just made slightly different. Cause right now you can see that the upper is not fitting flush on the sole. If I try to line it up perfectly on the left side, it's gonna be off centered on the right. I think I'm just gonna reuse the gum sole that comes with the donor. I mean, first of all, it has a lot more tread and it's the same color. I'm also avoiding any alignment issues that might come with it. Even with all that shaving, it's still not a perfect fit. If I go any deeper, I'm gonna bust through the air bubble. We're going to resize the shoe itself by unbinding the footbed, because this is what keeps the structure of the shoe. Once we take it out, we can line up the midsole line with our donor. Yo, check out how faded that toe vamp is. You can see that toe puff right there to give that toe box its structure. Now that we got that out, we can line up the shoes perfectly to the midsole now. So one quick tip to remove all of those fuzzies from your sock liner or your tongue, I use a fabric shaver. I'm gonna start prepping the midsoles for a re glue, so I'm gonna use acetone and cotton balls to clean the surface on the midsole. I'm gonna use a wood glue brush to spread the adhesive, and the glue I'm using is March Cement Super Stick. Before I put on the soles, I want to re-glue the midsoles first. Since I'm going to be airbrushing them, I taped off all the areas I don't want my paint to get on. I'm going to use my Cricut machine to cut up a vinyl to cover the air bubble. Uh, this thing fits like a glove. Now the next step is to paint match the midsoles. For my paint match, I'm gonna make it look aged a little bit. So I'm gonna make the paint match slightly darker. Each time I add a color, I put it on the midsoles to see where I'm at. Then I can adjust the value and tone of the color. Hey, I'm gonna be real with you guys. This edible that I took, it made me mix these colors like I'm doing some sugar spice and everything nice. I was throwing down random paint like I was Picasso. I don't know what I did, but I managed to get the colors I wanted. To strip the midsole paint, I'm gonna use a microfiber towel instead of con balls. Cause with con balls, sometimes I still see lint. So I definitely learned from that white cement three video that I did. So I'm gonna apply Bulldog Adhesion Promoter on the midsoles before I apply my paint. A 
I'm also gonna apply a white base coat. I'm gonna do a few thin coats, then I'll go heavier after that. Liquitex is probably the best varnish I've used to protect my paint. It's recommended to use high gloss first and then a matte finisher. So these are the colors that I used to paint match the Safari print. Do you guys want me to showcase the trial and error I do for my paint match? Let me know so I can start adding more detailed clips in the video. Now it's time to finish the last step for the reglue. We're going to use acetone and con balls to prep the upper. My anxiety just shoots through the roof every time I try to use an X-Acto knife to remove any type of tape or cover that I use to protect the air bubble. We're going to apply a thin layer of glue on the uppers and add a second layer of glue on the midsole. Now before I glue, I will let the glue sit for about an hour. And then I'll reactivate the glue by using heat. Once the glue temperature reaches to about 130 degrees, that's when I'll bond the midsole to the upper. And I'll just use a blow dryer to bring it back up to temperature. I won't be reusing the original footbed because, I mean, just look at it. I'm going to be using a brand new one and something a little stiffer too. So I'm going to add glue to both the new footbed and inside of the shoes to make good contact. I used my Cricut machine to print out a new Nike logo for the insole and I'm using a heat press vinyl. Once I got all that excess vinyl out, I'm going to use a hot iron to press it onto the insole. I've noticed after using this method, no matter how many times I beat down the shoes that I wear, the insole logo never comes off.
Alright, so the last step for this restoration is to touch up the safari print. You can see that there's a lot of spots missing. So how I'm going to touch up the print is I'm going to use a toothpick. But yeah, that's it for this video guys. I hope you guys learned something. If you guys want to check out the equipment I use for my restorations, there's a link in the description below and just scroll down until you see Amazon products. Alright, I'll see you guys next time. Later!